Integrated Circuit 1 Semiconductor Basics Now we talk about semiconductor and the standard characteristic Before we learn Integrated Circuit Design the, In this series we're going to cover analog circuit and digital circuit and how to design even the uh, silicon chip the layout and stuff okay so we get into really details of integrated circuit design but before that we have to understand the basic it's a semiconductor what is a semiconductor well semiconductors the name imply it's kind of a conductor not quite okay so to understand how the electricity runs uh, in the material the material need to have a free electron free electron is electron it's moving okay so negative voltage positive voltage free uh, electron run in the material the if material is is uh, crystallized such a way that it's free electron then it's become a conductor well the other way to conduct is say the you have a lot of electron void means hole we call the hole and what's happened is electron is injected and just hop around the hole then electron flow okay that's another way if you look at the periodic table it's periodic because the every eight electron from lithium to neon there are eight electrons between okay and when you have two electron and ten electron and uh, eight electron those are very stable electron doesn't move so there's no free electron and when there's no uh, electron it's hard to criticize uh, uh, it's it's hard to make a crystal so those are the gas because each atom is very independent and they don't gather together okay but you look at the aluminum is a three not a four the four is here in the middle okay and aluminum when it's crystallized it's provided like a three free electron so it's very conductive right so the what happened is the uh, the one in the middle four the carbon has four electron or you can say four holes and the these electrons are movable but not as free as aluminum or other metal like the 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 gold mercury and this area this area is very conductive right this has a plenty of free electrons the carbon is kind of conducting but not that quite freely the electron can move from one to next carbon it's hop around but depend on how it's crystallized too okay so same as silicon silicon and germanium Ger germanium the Ger germanium used to be used to make a diode and Ger germanium uh, radio uh, was a very old classic radios okay so these are the these are the type of uh, materials called semiconductor it's it's kind of between free electron the electron is not free and it has a hole so it has a both side not movable much okay so silicon and germanium uh, 
those are those are the uh, semi conductor so free electron it's not quite free but electron there are four electron and metal electron move around freely the semiconductors the electron rather go to the hole and go to the electron the uh, s become supplier of electron is kind of hop around so there is a uh, in a crystal there is a uh, energy gap between electron and hole that's called band gap okay so this kind of uh, semiconductor it's kind of conductor but not that much the resistivity if you look at metal is less than three silicon is is uh, the one to sixty and it's controllable why controllable because silicon if you put the impurity in it then it's become conductive okay um, this is not the server rubber rubber is 100 glass is 1000 these are insulator it doesn't resistivity is very high it doesn't conduct at all so it's right sit in the middle that's a semiconductor and the important thing is it's controllable resistivity is controllable by impurity so you have a two way to add impurity like phosphorus is provide extra electron to move around so it's become more conductor closer to conductor the p type is called boron the boron is to provide more holes and what's happened is elect electrons hop around the holes so it's become more conductive okay so this is a this is a very big discovery about depend on impurity two different mechanism of conductivities is achieved so difference in the process of flowing current is very important in this case n type impurities n type has more electron so what's happened is when you apply the voltage plus electrons the it just move out and the new electron is injected right so process is kind of one two three it's it's a plus side driven but when you have a uh, holes so what's happened is you apply plus voltage and negative voltage here then the electron get into the hole and that's hop to the next one so it's a one two three four it's kind of negative side driven okay this one is a positive side driven so mechanism of uh, uh, current flow is different between n type and p type So the question is, if you put both of them, both of them together, okay? So this is called a PN junction, right? And the P, P type here, N type here. What happens is the N type, if you apply the voltage, the voltage go across this material and the electron hop into the hole here, okay? Then electron become short it's come out another new supply of electron and hole this electron hop around and if hole becomes short its electron escape more holes created okay this area is called recombination area the electron and the hole combine at the junction area okay so it's like the diode when you add the positive and negative voltage in this direction diode is p type and n type here 
then current flow because this area act as a recombination two different mechanism of uh, uh, current flowing the achieved on each side but what happened if you reverse and apply the voltage here then the electron come out from here and electron is injected but the problem is this area it doesn't work out in the mechanism the recombination happen on the both edge okay so bunch of holes and bunch of electrons and in the middle area becomes nothing it's called a depletion zone okay so that's why when you press the add applied uh, positive voltage in this direction no current flow so diode shows one way okay so it's due to the two different characteristic the mechanism of current flow make it the asymmetric okay now transistor what's happened to transistor is you apply VBE this is a forward voltage it's create recombination area and when P is thin this is important everybody thinks oh transistor is NPN but if you make very thick P it doesn't act as a transistor P has to be very thin so this thin layer become whole area become recombination area so what's happened is when you apply VCE here from collector to emitter then it's go through this recombination area in the current flow electron flow this way right okay so large current flow by the influence of small current this is IB is very small and IC is much larger so large current can be controlled by the small current so this discovery is a transistor discovery and the symbol is this way it's a diode it's a forward but here it's a recombination area so current flow through this but if you don't apply this VBE there's no recombination area created so current shut off no more current flow okay so it's act like a switch right the small controlling uh, input is going to control the large uh, current so that's what the transistor is so important thing is the beta is very thin uh, not beta uh, base is very thin so on the silicon the very thin silicon what we make is we dope the impurity P type and N type N plus means high dosage so more conductive because this is just the uh, for use for the uh, electric node collector emitter base okay so what happened is the uh, P substrate means entire substrate is going to be P type so initially the silicon we we uh, dope P type very uh, basic make a substrate then we make a uh, varied layer the varied layer is is a different process those impurity is is doping is done by diffusion so what's happened is if you put the high temperature gas say boron 
then the boron is gonna seep into the silicon right in a diffusion because uh, high temperature the silicon atom is vibrating and the boron pass by that's get into between so the this the boron gas the boron get into the silicon okay so that's called the diffusion process so you have to calculate the, how much diffusion it's going to cause you diffuse this initially a little bit and you have to diffuse this again so total temperature and and uh, the time is going to create this much diffusion of the P but we have to diffuse the collector so N type N type is diffused to create a collector well so it's going to be like uh, the we have a silicon and this is going to be transistor it's a epitaxial layer and we diffuse p type and this is going to be collector and this is the base we add emitter emitter is very tiny right and the total amount of time and the temperature must be calculated to get this ideal depth and this layer is very thin and that's what we talk about here the recombination area and by injecting the holes here this become active then this become short circuit like current flow between emitter and the collector now this buried layer is not diffusion so so called a stop, uh, spattling process that means you shoot any impurity to the silicon say you have silicon you shoot any impurity then you get the impurity inside the silicon and you apply the uh, thermal process for diffusion of the base and emitter this spread become n varied layer then why you need this n varied layer well the epitaxial layer is actually the low, do uh, low dosage of n type and the resistance is high that means from here to here the R the there will be too much resistance here okay so this is a built-in to the transistor and this has a bad effect in circuit design so what we do is we create a buried layer of N plus low resistance layer so it goes through here then act on this area so this distance the resistivity of this distance is reduced by this very layer and that's to improve eliminate this parasitic resistance on the collector side okay now actually there's another way to make a transistor it's called NMOS and PMOS depend on the polarity so what happened is there is a thin uh, oxide layer which is insulator you put the, uh, the so-called gate and apply the voltage here and this voltage is going to affect the, the, this surface area so what happens is if you apply voltage between these two, the usually it doesn't go through because it's a reverse transistor. It's like diode is this way, right? But this voltage can control the surface area to create the uh, recombination area. 
So suddenly, the S to D become conductive. So this is called N MOS, and if you reverse the polarity, it's P MOS. So the combine them together, we call the C MOS. And what's C? The complementary MOS, the P type, and N type, N MOS and P type together. It's convenient to make a, a digital circuit using this configuration. And the advantage and disadvantage, the, we're going to talk about that in the next video. So, the, we will get into the detail of characteristic of transistor, that this type is called bipolar transistor. And this is MOS transistor. Okay? And the both are used. And analog circuit design, the most of analog circuit design uses bipolar. And digital design uses a CMOS these days because uh, the CMOS was very slow before, but now because of the size got so small, it's got faster. Advantage, big advantage is CMOS is the less power. And when you make a microprocessor, there's so many gates, and less power become the major reason to use CMOS. But bipolar, the power is higher, and it can be extremely high speed. So some communication device, very high speed IC chip, are all bipolar. And there's no way the CMOS can achieve that kind of speed because bipolar can burn the power and speed up the digital circuit. Okay? And also analog circuit is a very well established analog circuit design done by bipolar. And that's what we are going to introduce in the following uh, video. Okay? So this is the basic of semiconductors, how to make uh, transistors using the characteristic of impurity in the silicon. If you like this video, subscribe.